Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Accesi suprememastertv.com barra schedule. Hamare karkam pesh kye jate kai bha shame krupya deke suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Woman de jemu te kong to jung yu yen, chin kan suprememastertv.com xie xian schedule. Ranjangan kami menawakan banyak bahasa. Sila kunjungi suprememastertv.com slash kataban schedule. Para mi juna matu ofira العديد من اللغات يرجى زيارة suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. ناشا برنامج بيتلاقيت منوكا يازيكو. بجالوستا بس ماتريتي suprememastertv.com كاساي شرطة schedule. ما كاريا كامالو عندها جستون اي انيكا باشلالو. دايجيس تشودندي suprememastertv تشوكا كام ادو slash schedule. So similarly, goodness or heavenly quality of Buddha nature. Is the same for every of us, and should we desire to live a heavenly life and to earn the kingdom of God afterward, we have many ways to do it. The most simple is to have faith in your religion, practice what your religion teaches you. Practice, practice, not talk, not preaching, but practice. Please stay with us to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's program will be presented in Chinese and English with subtitles in Arabic, Olaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, Czech, Dutch, English, French, German, Hebrew, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Thai, Turkish, and Urdu. Tenjilvenhoutsuguanjong,我是饶会,来自于十句进的新加坡,我们有自信的新加坡人民,感谢您行事高雅,让这个世界变得更美好,愿天堂保佑您。新加坡位居世界的十字路口之一闻名于世虽然岛上的摩天大楼姿势临比但是道路两旁花木扶疏处处可见赏心悦目的植栽这都得归功于新加坡政府常年努力种植树木美化环境新加坡独树一帜在于和谐地融合种族和文化早期的移民有马来人华人印度人和欧洲人成为一处民族大熔炉各种族有其独特的文化一年四季都有缤纷的特殊节庆大家一起同乐思想开明的新加坡人民
多次热情接待青海无上师的莅临，并聆听他启迪人心的讲经开示。现在就邀请您聆听一九九二年三月三日，青海无上师在新加坡的讲经开示，主题为“为自己和后代创造永恒的天堂”第一集。Good evening, my friends. Most of the places where I went for lecture, people often ask me, "How old are you?" <laughs> They don't ask for enlightenment. They ask, "How old are you?" <laughs> Some people even say to me, "Oh, you look like a child. How much do you know?" <laughs> so I said to them, "Not much. Not much." Just enough to take you to heaven. <laughs> yes. Actually, heaven doesn't belong to me alone. Heaven or nirvana doesn't belong to Buddhists alone. Doesn't belong to Christians alone. Doesn't belong to Hindus or whatever religions we may name in this world. Heaven is the state of tranquility, of desirelessness, of every thing fulfilled of its own accord, and we call that also nirvana. Actually, when the Buddha was alive, he tried to break up the false conception of heaven by. Divided it into many different、uh, states, so we have kind of lower heavens and higher heavens, and the highest, the Buddha say, nirvana. Okay. We can call that the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is what, and what is Buddha nature? And nirvana and all that—it <laughs> sounds very far-fetched and very strange. And most of the myths of the practices, like yoga, meditation, or religious penance, make people feel that it is difficult to meditate. It is difficult to attain God. It is so difficult to attain Buddhahood. Actually, it is not that. True religion belongs to all people. God belongs to all beings. You might call it Buddha nature if you wish, or Buddhahood if you wish. This is a common property of everyone. To some beings. Even hell belongs to them. To some beings, only nirvana, only heaven—I mean the kingdom of God—belongs to them. Hell belongs to someone else. To some, they possess both hell and heaven. To some others, they possess only hell, so-called hell. I will explain soon. Now we.、Uh, Should try to understand and explain it in a very scientific way and logical way, so that the myths of all these far-fetched heavens can be brought down to earth and let people have a close look at these so-called places.
I may liken the hell and heaven, uh, goodness, uh, I mean positive energy, just like energies. Now, in the universe, all matter, all things are created by energies. And we call that uh, creative force, or we might call it the creator. And all the energies have now scattered all over places in the universe and became different worlds and different beings. And now these beings, they will acquire their individual state of thinking or level of consciousness. And according to the interreactions between each other, they will generate another kind of energy. This kind of energy, we will divide it into two categories. The first one, we can call it positive energy, or we say God nature, uh, heavenly, uh, heavenly force of Buddha nature. The second category, we can call it uh, negative power or evil force or dark force or opposite of goodness. Now the goodness and the positive energy are side by side with the negative. Whenever any beings, be they angelic beings or earthling, the worldly people, whenever they generate goodness, tolerance, loving, compassion, and cooperation with each other, then these energies will be categorized as good or God force, positive power. And then the more we think, the more the, more the beings generate this kind of goodness, the more positive power we have in our atmosphere or in our world. And whenever we or any beings generate hatred, bad thoughts, and uh, any kind of negative tendencies, actions, or speech, we add it more into the negative storehouse of the atmosphere, which is we call evil force. And this force will breed more hatred, more wars, more disharmony in our world or in any world that these people happen to uh, reside. That is the reason why we should generate always goodness in thoughts, in deeds, and in speech in order to derive the goodness that we have sown. So that's why in the Bible it is stated that as you sow, so shall you reap. And in the Buddhist scriptures, it's the same thing. If you do good deeds, you get a good result. If you do bad, then you reap the result thereof. Most of the scriptures mention the same things. Now, in order to reach heaven, it is logical. Now we know that we have to tune into goodness, to the positive part of the world. And the more we step into goodness, the nearer to goodness, the more we are merged into this heavenly quality, the more we are near to heaven. Negative force may exist in our neighborhood, but they will not affect us. For example, we have lights in our house neon lamps, and outside of our house may be darkness. But when we step into our house and stay there, we can read, we can work, we can play, we can see our beloved ones and all the surrounding. The, the darkness outside will not affect our light inside the house. So that is a very simple and um, kind of a basic explanation about good and evil, heaven and hell. 
If the negative power is so strong, then it created a kind of very condensed atmosphere, and whoever happened to be drawn into it by his own or her own actions, then he will experience the so-called hell, where the most intense agonies, repentance, guilty feeling will torture them until they have uh, paid off the bad thinking or deeds that they have done before. We can avoid that. We can avoid this state of agony, which call hell. If we turn into goodness now, there are two kinds of heaven. One is temporary and one is permanent. The so-called temporary heaven can be earned by doing good deeds, by avoiding evils, and by practicing religious uh, penance or believing in some religion or the God of your faith, and prayers and reading scriptures and trying to live accordingly as much as you can. Another kind of heaven or kingdom of, we call the ultimate kingdom of God, it is the permanent, eternal, everlasting one. That requires more effort and that requires the grace of the Almighty or the Buddha nature, the Buddha, Buddha. Yes. For the Buddhist, Buddha is the highest. <laughs> For the Christian, God is the highest. Actually, both of them are the same. Mm. We will not want to argue about that. Mm. In some of uh, the books that my disciple have uh, written for you, I think I have explained more detail, more clearly, and in the space of two or uh, three hours, I would not like to debate over this anymore. But just to offer you a solution to better your life, to live a more fulfilled uh, existence, whether you are Buddhist or Christians or Sikhs or Hindu, it doesn't matter. Goodness is only goodness. Negative is negative for all religious people alike for all beings alike. Just like darkness <laughs> is for all nationalities alike, and light is for all nationalities is also alike. There is no difference between English perception of light or African perception of light. The benefit is the same. If you put the same neon lamp into an English house, and put that lamb into an African tribe house, both of them know that it is light. Doesn't matter if they communicate with each other or not, there's no need to explain that it's light. And if he steps outside in the jungle, he knows it's darkness. He might express it in different names, different terms, but darkness still prevails. So similarly, goodness or heavenly quality or Buddha nature it's the same for every of us. And should we desire to live a heavenly life and to earn the kingdom of God afterward, we have many ways to do it. The most simple is to have faith in your religion. Practice what your religion teaches you. Practice, practice, not talk, not preaching, but practice, practice yourself. Keep the commandments of God. If you are Christians, keep the five precepts of the lay Buddhist practitioners and keep other religious precepts according to your religious order. First, keep them, practice them. Practice goodness, practice compassion, love, charity. I think Singapore seems to be a very good place. All the religions are in harmony with each other and everyone is free to do his own work and to believe in his own uh, religious faith without feeling controlled 
or agitated by the neighbor. The government of Singapore deserves our praise for the wise uh, ruling system that at the moment prevails in this country. And the country is so clean, so fine, so green, and people are happy. And I think we can live in harmony with each other in every country like this. Every country should be like this, at least for the earth people. Then we have no war and no hatred and no troubles. The money that the people pay for tax should be uh, contributed to the common good of the citizens. It's like in Singapore, for example. Then people would be happy. Now, don't, that means uh, the people here in Singapore truly practice to some extent the religions that they profess. But there are some more advanced religious practice that to some intense uh, truth of God searching persons, the ordinary practices seem not to be enough. Hmm. To these people, we would like to offer the method of Guan Yin, which is the contemplation of the inner power, God power, or the Buddha nature. This Buddha nature let itself be known by a kind of soundless sound, kind of vibrationless vibration and lightless light. Because in that light, there is no shadow. Everything is clear and doesn't impact each other. In this sound, we only hear wisdom. Actually, I cannot say hear because we don't hear it with the ear. What the Tao Te Ching say, this is called Tao. The Tao, we, we don't need the ears, but we can hear it. We don't need the eyes, but we can see it. Because this is the lightless light, the shadowless light, and the noiseless sound. Therefore, we don't need the ears, but we can hear them. These are the things that are stated in the scriptures but we do not experience them because we don't know how to go about uh, reaching them. So like in the Christian Bible, it is says uh, some saints have seen God, uh, like God is like a big flame, right? Big light, or like a white dove, dove that descends from heaven. And God spoke in the sound, like the sound of thunder, like the sound of many waters. And then they say, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And everything was created by this Word, and nothing that was created that is not from this Word. Now, what is this Word? This is the sound that I have just mentioned, the noiseless sound, the vibration, the sound of God the sound of thunder, the sound like many thousand waters. This we can hear through proper guidance. And this flame, God appear like flame, God appear like light. This we can see through proper guidance. And this we want to offer to the serious seekers after the truth, to the one who would like to devote his meaningful life to God, to seek the kingdom of God, which is within himself, according to Bible statement. And the ones who like to seek the Buddha nature, the Buddha within himself, which is also stated in the Buddhist scriptures. We heard all this, we read all this, but we do not experience. Just because in the olden times, the communication system was not perfect, was not on a large scale, and one continent doesn't know the next. But at the present, I think we can, we can take the opportunity 
of our civilized communication system to broadcast what we know to each other in order to profit each other, in order to elevate our earth mental consciousness into a higher level of understanding, in order to make our earth into a heaven. We no need to immigrate into another planet or to Nirvana if we make our world become a paradise. If everyone lives according to what the Bible states and everyone see God within, see the light of God, the kingdom of God, hear the sound, the word of God or the Buddha nature, then the world, our world becomes paradise. Because this light, this sound, make us become saints, make us become Buddhas. And the worlds where the Buddhas live are nirvana. The worlds where the saints live are heaven, kingdom of God. Many other planets have this kind of heavenly atmosphere because all the beings in that planet practice, tune in with God power and have all their desires fulfilled, all their power at their hands and all the peace within themselves and within the neighborhood. Because in those planets only goodness are generated and no negativities like in our earth. Our earth is not the only planet in this universal galactic system. There are many other planets similar to ours. Some are more civilized, some are less uh, developed. We don't have time to talk about all these. We can talk about our earth first. <laughs> this is the most practical and necessary. Now, if you understand the atmosphere, something when it's light, you know, everything in the material sense, when it's light, then it rises up, right? It is more on the upper atmosphere, so like the heat or thing like that. Yes, and whatever is heavy, cold, then it stay a little bit lower in the atmosphere or lower due to gravity. Mm. Similarly, goodness will stay more or less above the negativity. But in our world, goodness and badness together, yeah, goodness, of course, above, but not that we are free from negativity. We have it attached to our neighborhood, to our lower, um, lower states. And now all the world, they have only goodness, only goodness. These places call heaven or kingdom of God. We can attain these planets or we can visit them now if we are in the same quality, the same vibratory frequencies as these beings, at this planet. So, uh, to practice the kingdom of God, to attain nirvana is no mythical story, but it is a very uh, clear-sighted, very scientific way of life. Should we want to live that way? It's not difficult. It's just a way of life that we choose. We can choose to live an ordinary life, just like in our world. We can choose to become just a taxi driver or just a um, company worker, a manager, so we can choose to be a political leader, we can choose to be a, a, um, a president, <laughs> we can choose to be a, a, a top banker, all kind of jobs. If we apply our effort to the chosen jobs or chosen aspect, we can become that. We can be a doctor or we can be a nurse only, even though in a medical field. Same thing in spiritual uh, endeavor. We can choose to be just an ordinary religious believer. We go to the church, we do good charity, we offer to the Buddha to the, build a temple and we offer to the monks. And we keep as much as possible the precepts. And we don't eat vegetarian, for example. 
<laughs> we call ourselves convenient Buddhists. <laughs> Very convenient, yes. <laughs> now it's okay, it's okay. But our lives will be different than the life of the Buddhas, than the life of Christ. If we aspire to be a Bodhisattva, a saint, a Buddha, a Christ, then we have to apply our effort more. We have to train ourselves in a more specific manner, and we have to be more, I mean, more, more sincere, more studious. And we have to apply our life in such a way that the Buddha, when he was alive, apply himself, that Christ, when he was alive, uh, apply himself. So, when the Buddha was alive, he was practicing meditation. He tried all kinds of meditation, including ascetism, which he forced upon himself. And then he starved, kind of almost to death, because believing that to punish the body, you will attain the soul. And then after many years of a near-death experience, <laughs> he realized that this is not the true way, this is too extreme, and nobody can do it. Therefore, he turned and looked in the other directions, and he has succeeded. And then he left us some footprints, some instructions to practice. When somebody asked the Buddha, what is the method to attain Buddhahood, to become a Buddha? He say, Kwan Yin method, contemplation on your own inner nature. He said, turn your hearing ability inwards and hear your own Buddha nature. And in the Lotus Sutra, he's mentioned that those practitioners of this Kwan Yin method can hear the sounds of various musical notes inside and outside can hear very clearly. If it was to hear only the outside instruments, like the drums, the bells, the sitar, the flute, then he would not mention that inside and outside the practitioners can hear. He can hear up to heaven. He can hear up to, uh, down to the hell by practicing this method. I hear various kind of sounds, inside and outside. He feared that we did not understand what he meant by hearing the music and the sounds of heaven, so he mentioned that inside and outside. <laughs> that means if you hear the drum outside, but that's different from when you hear, hear the drum inside. And the drum and the thunder and all that, these are not actually the very high state of consciousness. They are even higher states. So that is the Kuan Yin method, according to Buddhist scriptures. And we can hear that. We can tune into this kind of frequency, vibration, in order to enlighten our consciousness. Not that we care to see for the light, not that we care to hear the inner heavenly music. It's just that because if we see this and we hear this, our, our feeling, our wisdom, Everything is uplifted into a very blissful state, and then we can carry out every duty in our life with different perspective. We can see life in more golden light, in more uh, positive point of view, and we can work more efficiently, and we can think more clearly, and we can understand every scripture in different religions that are put before us, even without teacher, no teacher. The way, you, the way people explain the scriptures to you are not, not always the true way, not always the, 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 the right way. And when you practice Kuan Yin method, you know it differently. You know the truth from the false. And you know many other things that you never knew before that no one else except you would know. No one else except the practicer of the inner kingdom of God would know. And this come by and by. But at the first stage, at the time of initiation, 
you will be offered first-hand experiences of these so-called kingdom of God or Buddha nature. And then you continue from that day on, every day, if you practice, you will hear it and you will see it. And different stages are gradually. And the more you practice, the more blissful you feel, the smoother your life becomes in all aspects. Not only spiritual aspects, but even worldly aspects. That's why in the Quran it's mentioned that be a good guest on earth, live a rich life. Because the believer in God should not be in poverty. God doesn't punish people who believe Him to give Him poverty. God doesn't give poverty to this earth. God doesn't create hell. It is we, by mistakes, by interactions between each other, by choosing the wrong action at that decisive moment, create hell. So now we can think it over and create heaven, at least temporary heaven, so we can rest for a while. And then <laughs> we are free from the burdens of this world for a while, and then we think what we want to do next, whether we want to return to earth again or we want to pursue the higher stage of heaven. That we can decide. So the temporary heaven can be uh, achieved by doing good deeds, uh, by believing God, by prayers, by sincere repentance of our mistakes, and by trying to do always what is best for the society and for ourselves. And be vegetarian. Many people like to follow our method, but they cannot put down that piece of steak. So, <laughs> so I offer you uh, a replacement with a piece of tofu. <laughs> well, it's cheaper, easier to digest, and less guilt, less sins, less bad karma. Karma means as you sow, so shall you reap, yeah? Law of course and retribution. So this is the kind of temporary heaven that you will create for yourself now. As a Christian, you meditate on God, on Jesus Christ. As a Buddhist, you meditate on the Buddhas of Kuan Yin, Bodhisattva, Amitabha, Buddha, whomever Buddhas that you like best. As a Muslim, you meditate on Allah. I think the Muslim system was very good. They pray five times a day. At least they remember God that many times. You are good in your own way, and you try your best to believe in the Buddha that you never see. Mm. This is already very good of you. <laughs> so I offer you that you want to see the Buddha, I can make you see the Buddha, because I have seen the Buddha. If you want to see God, I can let you see God, because I have seen God. But in case you don't want to see God, <laughs> don't want to see Buddha that much, and you don't want to stay in heaven forever, then you can have a kind of temporary nirvana or heavens by keeping the precepts according to your religious belief and try to do as good as possible. Avoid the bad mistakes. Avoid it. Make a list of what you should like to change according to religious uh, standard. Make a list of your life, what you want to change, what you should uh, uh, develop more. For example, you know you have compassion, and you like to give people uh, in charity, in, in a poor condition, or flood victims, then you know you have that. Then you always try to develop more. You know you believe in God, you like some contact with God, then you meditate on God or Buddhas. And try to be vegetarian. Vegetarian is not a religious uh, way of life only, but it is a way to save the world from starvation and poverty. We have many research to prove that we waste a lot of human of earth products and resources in order to feed cows and pigs for many years for a lot of qualities of medicines, of uh, proteins, 
beans and all kinds of vegetables in order to rice a pig, and we eat it only for very fast time, five minutes even, five minutes. If you eat that slowly, somebody make it in one minute, yes. Therefore, if we are vegetarian, not only that because we are religious people, but it's truly to save the world. Our world has been in poverty in some parts of the world and been in uh, starvation because we do not work with each other to save each other. There are many so-called charitable works and uh, relief service, that's no doubt. But this is not the root of the problem. The deficit, deficit in food is not rooted in uh, Africa only or in some of Asian countries. It is rooted in a meat-eating diet. All the, the energies, all the technologies, many other intelligent activities are poured into rising meat. Instead of analyzing what is the better contribution to the world population, what is the better nutrition for all the people. As you know yourself by now, scientists have proved that vegetarian diet is very healthy even. All the hospitals are built for whom? Meat eaters. All the, <laughs> all the people there are non-vegetarians, don't you see? Most of them. So now we eat ourselves with the poison and then we even have to cure ourselves with the hospital equipment. We make double trouble for us. So that the root we have to cure, not, not the branches. To help with relief works, to donate some food for the poor, it is not the solution to the starvation problem of the world. The root lies in each of us that we must help that we must save some of our energy, world resources for our brothers and sisters. The underdeveloped country might sell their protein products to the developed country <laughs> and then feed them to cows, for example. And the underdeveloped country starves. Instead, we have to share, we have to help each other. But of course, I'm not a Politicians, <laughs> I can only try to uh, tell you to help in my way, in my own small capacity. But the world leaders have to work together if they are interested in the well-being of all nations, not only of our nation. But it is good enough that we take care of our nation already. <laughs> I am always grateful and happy, boundlessly happy, when I see any nation prosper, live in cleanliness and saneliness, and in harmony with each other. For example, like Singapore. I feel very happy when I arrive here. I was happy when I arrived many times here before, but not for lecture. And I feel that this country could set some example for the other nations at least Asian country. <laughs> Yet it is funny that whenever I, I am programmed to speak English in a lecture, then all day, day long I have to speak Chinese or, or <laughs> Vietnamese or other language. And whenever I was supposed to speak Chinese, then some of English-speaking people just come all day long and make my tongue twisted when, <laughs> when I go on the platform <laughs> to perform Chinese. Uh, there is, is always uh, no perfection in this world. Therefore, if we have Kuan Yin method, we speak only one language inside. And whenever we meet uh, each other, sometimes we do not even speak. We understand each other. And there is no need to speak much when we have wisdom, when each one knows what he has to do, in which place, in what time. Then actually there is no, not much to speak. Just like the old wise uh, emperors of old, they rule the kingdom without ruling, we heard this way. They govern the nations without governing 
Therefore, uh, under heaven, everything is peaceful. We heard Chinese old saying like that. And most of the countries are the same in the old time when we have good kings, good rulers. And it could happen now again. In, we could make it into a golden age again by living the way of Christian, living the way of Buddhist, the way of true Hindu, etc. Take care of our moral responsibilities. Help our neighbors as much as we can. Sacrifice some of our wealth, our palate, palate desires in order to help developing the world and help the, the other needy uh, brothers and sisters. In this way, we contribute our effort to build a better nation in the future generation to come. It is not a loss. It will be to the benefit of our uh, children and grandchildren and uh, nephews and our brothers and sisters' children. It will not be lost. We no need to take care of the present generation alone. And we no need to think that the world will be better later, but we will die. We cannot benefit from it. Our children will. And even if we don't have children, we should not think in such a, a small term, but think of the joy of other people who are born after us, who live in such a peaceful, harmony, and plentiful world. That should give us enough joy, enough reward, without any material gain. And this is the way of the gentleman, Jun Zi. This is the way that Lao Tzu, Kong Tzu, Buddha, Christ have endeavored to teach human beings for many thousands of years. What I am telling you is not new. It is that you have forgotten, and that you have not lived, tried to live, some of us, not all, that we have not tried to live that kind of life, so we do not know how to go about with it. But we can try now. We can try tomorrow and see how things go, see how better our, we feel, how beneficial to our nation and to the world at large. But this should be done, the precepts should accompany wisdom. The good deeds and thought and speech should accompany by meditation on God quality, by know-how to tune in with the storehouse of God quality. This is not very difficult. We can save about two and a half hours every day to meditate, to become a better man a better, the more intelligent, more relaxed, less sickness, less worries, more secure in the heart. And in this way, we, we create a temporary heaven for us on earth. And then when we die, after we leave this world, because of the like, attract like theory, because of the compatibility of uh, uh, um, similar oscillations, we will be drawn, we will be, uh, we will be poured into such a state of consciousness, which we call heaven, in another plane of existence. We can leave heaven on earth and heaven afterward, according to our present deeds, thought, and speech, because like attract likes. So if we do good now, we'll be good now, and we are intelligent now, we will be drawn to the good place, and more intelligent places than the Earth planet. The Earth planet houses both negative and positive, good and bad. Heaven houses more goodness and less negativity. Higher heaven, kingdom of God, or nirvana, houses only pure goodness. And that is eternal, because goodness, purity, cannot die. It can only die when it's contaminated with some of the ephemeral quality 
which is negativity, which is material, which is not light, not, um, not spiritual, not pure. Everything pure energy, pure goodness is eternal. Everything contaminated with some evil forces, some negative uh, quality will have to be recycled and then filtered. Therefore, it has to um, recycle. It had to what we call transmigrate. Therefore, we have the transmigration of life and death. If it's pure and light, it's only stay upward. If it's a little bit heavy, it stay in the middle. If it's too heavy, stay down, down there. Everything we do, think and speak has certain energies and force which they form a kind of pattern, invisible, and it will be attached to us when we live in this world or after we live in this world because this is invisible, it cannot be destroyed. But if we leave this now and turn into goodness, and then from goodness we ascend into the pure goodness, it is easier than from the negative to ascend into pure goodness. We go just like a staircase. It is easier to reach the high floor when you are already on the staircase, but if you are outside or in the cellar, it is more difficult. And if we have no staircase at all, <laughs> and it is difficult. So the goodness of this world acts like a staircase so that we can connect ourselves with the pure goodness in other regions. That is what we call nirvana or the kingdom of God. And in between, we will experience the so-called different plans of heaven or different plan of consciousness. According to what we think, what we do, we will be attracted to these different worlds, different uh, places. That is according to our state of mind. It's just like a doctor, he will uh, live in a different house than a garbage collector, for example, because of the status of life. Similarly, spiritual status in the universe is also like that. It's not that um, we say, why nirvana is only reserved for these practitioners and good people. Yeah, they earned it. They earned it. University is earned by a qualified high school graduate students, not the ungraduated ones and not the kindergarten children. This is very simple and logical. God is very just. We expect him to be, and he is. <laughs> now, God is also our good self, our compassion, our love that created this force of God. Therefore, Christ said, God is within you. Know you not that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit lives within you. Yeah. The Buddha also say the Buddha is within you because we can create that. We have that. All human beings have goodness and badness. So the Buddha nature, the goodness, the heavenly, also we have created a part of it together with other beings. And the negativity, we also have helped to create it with a little bit, maybe, negativity from our part, maybe in the past or the present. If we did not, we have never created this negativity, then we have always been a saint, then we have always been in the upper level of the universe. And sometimes we, these upper level people, descend into this earth and brought goodness, intelligence, love, compassion to the people of this world. So we call them Buddhas or we call them saints. But we, in this world, can also attain this state of sainthood if we know how to study in this field. It's just like any of the other science of life. Whatever we want to study, we will graduate in that field. And this science of life, we offer free of charge before, during, and after your study. The only obligation 
you must have is that you have to work for it. <laughs> you have to learn every day. You have to sacrifice two and a half hours of playing, running, drinking, and you have to put out the heavy detrimental products like alcohol, meat, drugs, gambling, illicit man-woman relationship. Marriage is okay. Marriage is okay. And the, another obligation is that should you know you have this wisdom and you have this power and you have this happiness derived from this way of life, then you probably will feel very obliged. You feel yourself. Nobody tells you to do it. You feel obliged to share it with other people. And even if you don't feel obliged to share it, you will share it anyhow. You will just naturally bubble forth <laughs> what is in your store of understanding. And you will actually just naturally generate the peaceful atmosphere and the blissful blessing to everyone that comes to you. They will feel good. Some will suddenly feel healed from sickness. Some suddenly will be enlightened, some suddenly will see heaven, some suddenly will see light. According to your state of consciousness, you will bless them invisibly, unknowingly, by your spiritual power, by the uh, amount of uh, gut power that you have acquired during your practice. So this is a very selfless service and a very short service we can render to mankind. And each one should try to do it, but we must try. All of us must try in our ways to better our life, not only for our nation, but whenever we travel, wherever we go, we will carry this heaven with us, the atmosphere of peace, love, and uh, brotherhood, and people will be happy around you. You don't need to give them money to make them feel happy. You just be there and people just feel good. Therefore, many miracles happen around a practitioners of Guan Yin method. Just like when Buddha was alive, many people attained some miraculous understanding inside, attained some sight of heaven, seeing Amitabha Buddha land, and see other kind of lights, hear the sound. And when Jesus was alive, many people benefit by his presence. Some get cured from sickness. Uh, some see uh, the light of God, and some feel loved, some feel secure. That is because of the presence of God has been fully revealed within Jesus. The same with Buddha. The Buddha nature within him was fully revealed. Therefore, everyone is benefited within his presence, and everyone who thinks of him even from afar, who knows about his name, about his teaching from afar, get also similar or more or less benefit. That is a great attainment of a Buddha or a Christ or any saint of this higher order. We can aspire to be one, or at least half of that one, half Buddha, and we have half, 50%, also better than nothing. When the Buddha was alive, he has many disciples, and even his disciples can work miracles. And Jesus promised his disciples that whatever he does, they can do the same. Therefore, we owe it to mankind to practice the way Christ did, the way Buddha did. And because I owe it to mankind, to attain what I have attained today, I have to share it with you. <laughs> I'm happy to share it with you. Whoever likes to share it, I'm happy to devote my time, my attention, my energy, even my health, my finance to you without any uh, request in return, except that you work for it, for the benefit of yourself and for the world that we live in. I have lived in this world for 42 years. I have owned you all many things. I owe you your love, your food, your clothes, your education, that I can speak English, that I can speak Chinese, that I grow up up till now. I owe you the building of the hotels I stay. 
of the roads I walk on, of the beautiful beach that I enjoy. I owe you everything. Therefore, I would like to repay this kindness to all of you. This is only a duty, so no need to feel obliged to me. Only if you want to learn, I'm too happy and grateful. So now we have uh, discussed about two kinds of heaven. <laughs> one is temporary and one is eternal. And should you like to choose one of them, of course we're happy to help you. And it's not that I will come today and then live tomorrow only, but I will stay with you forever. After the initiation, you have inside help and protection and outside contact also. Inside is that when you meditate, you will see maybe the Master, you may see Buddha helping you, or you may see lights, or you might feel good, comfortable, blissful. You will feel your wisdom grow more and more each day. Your love expands infinitely. That is when you know the method is successful, is very useful. Otherwise, how do you measure? If everyone just tells you to do anything, <laughs> then you just uh, close your eyes and believe it, and you have no proof. Proof we must give you, proof you must demand. And you will have that at the time of initiation, immediately, and continue afterward, every day. You will experience miracles for yourselves when you are in trouble, when you are in accidents, when you have nowhere to turn to, that when you know God power, that's how you love God. That's how you know God. That's how you know that there is Buddha, there is God who protects you, who loves you. Otherwise, how do you know? How do we know that there is God? What is the use of God <laughs> when, when we don't see Him or we don't see the protection and help when we are in need? We don't ask Him to come every day, maybe, but when we need, we must feel that somebody is there. So that's how you worship God even more as a Christian after practicing running method. That's how you become a better Buddhist and more grateful to the Buddha, because we know what Buddha is now. We see, we feel, we experience the protection, the blessing power in every time of our life. Up to now, we only stay outside. We don't even know where the door is to knock. But after initiation, we step in, become a member of this blissful community powerful sainthood, and we experience God, then we know. Otherwise, we pray every day. If we don't see God, we feel discouraged. We don't feel God when in time of need, our faith is keep shaking, wavering all the time. That's why I offer you this method, so that you know there is God, you know there is Buddha, and you can be more devoted to God. You can be more convinced in your faith, in whatever faith you have. You do not need to change your God. You do not, do not need to trade Buddha for, for God. Believe whatever you believe, but get in touch with it, and we show you how, because you have him inside. You just don't know where to push the button, that's all. <laughs> It is like in any other science, you have to know. Just know where to put the button. Transfer yourself from darkness to light. Push the button, and you are there. Just like many kinds of transportation in this world, we use bicycle, takes <laughs> take too long. Uh, we use a uh, boat, it takes a little bit faster. We use airplane. It's faster, but there are other airplanes which are faster still, and there are even UFOs. We will have in the future, when we can afford to buy it from the next planet, for example, <laughs> where they produce UFOs to sell. But for the moment, they dare not come, <laughs> and they worry that we, we will kill them. We might kill them by love, not by hatred even, because we don't know yet how to take care of them. We might put, put them in the laboratories and cut them to have a look, see what contains inside. Yeah. 
or we might give them penicillins to avoid AIDS, for example, which they don't have. <laughs> or give all kinds of vaccinations, and they get sick before they even know what sickness is. Yeah, so they came healthy to our planet and returned sick or died. Therefore, they are still very hesitant to come to establish business with us. Yeah. But we will do it, maybe in the future, when all of the earthling consciousness are uplifted, are civilized, when we all think in a broader sense, broader scale, when we think of the whole galaxy, the whole universe, expands our consciousness and understanding and intelligence, instead of thinking of only of our house, our country, or our village, then we'll be ready for this kind of intergalactic communication. Then we will learn more, and we will grow faster, and we will have more and more and more comfort to life. We have everything we want, and we can share everything we have, and share everything other, other planets have with us to better our lives, to build a better world for our children. This will come. This will come. But we must train ourselves in this way of broad thinking. This is a way of a gentleman. Even the Buddha, Christ, 2,500 years ago, they already have such a broad thinking. He preached not of the earth, but of Amitabha, pure land, western paradise, eastern paradise. And Christ, he preached not from earth, not of the earth, but of heaven. My father's, my father's mansion has so many mansions. He means so many planets, so many levels of consciousness that he can lead us to. We have to think this way. We have to think like the Buddha, like Christ. We have to broaden our, our look. We have to hope big and high for the future. And we start right now. We can see even other planets right now with the Kuan Yin method. We can contact other beings right now with the Kuan Yin method. If, if we don't want to do it yet, it's okay, but we must bear in mind that such things are possible. I have seen it, my disciples have, why not you? And now, at least try your best to pacify our world to purify our world by uh, living a purer life, a more moral standard of life, and try to put down the meat diet, because it contains a killing instinct. And the violent films and all that, try not to let your children watch too much. The more we watch these violent films, the more we are stunned, the more we are insensitive to the suffering of people when they are killed, or animals when they are killed. In one country, it is experienced that the soldiers of that country were reluctant to kill the enemy, enemies. But when they are shown the violent films, and they see all the killing in the films, they later become insensitive, become less reluctant to kill, and they're more ready to kill the enemies. And it is also known that the soldiers of, who are fed more with meat and all that, they are more, more ready to combat, they're more furious. And these soldiers, they, they don't even watch that many violent films, not as much as our children do on uh, television. So do not... Uh, <laughs> try to avoid the parents' responsibility by sit the children in front of the television and turn on any kind of program. Try to play with them, teach them moral from childhood. And when they grow up, you don't fear that they become bad children and make you worry. In the old times, when you were young, or when my father or my grandfather were young, moral lessons were a kind of compulsory, natural in our class, in the schools. Nowadays, less and less. Therefore, the children grows up, grow up, 
and having all kind of bad influences instead of having a very good ethical root from childhood. When the tree has a good root in the earth, when it grows up, it doesn't uh, fall down easily. But when the tree is not rooted well, it just grows up a little bit and then it gets broken down by winds or other natural force. I feel everyone is my brothers. I cannot identify myself with any nation. I feel at ease with Singapore people or with Malaysian, uh, Chinese, uh, German, in English, and Americans, everywhere. I feel at home. Hmm. Actually, the world is a big house where God gave different children different rooms. And actually, we should be free to walk from one room to the next to see our brothers and sisters. But sometimes we put barriers between the nations. And some people, for some um, fanatical reason, breed even barriers between religions, maybe because of ignorance or maybe for personal gain. All this should be erased, should be changed, if we want to live in a better world. You know what happened today. There was a German, a friend of, of our disciple, Mm, he came last night, about past midnight, to bro bring us some type machine and a fax machine because we did not bring with us. And the fax machine that our disciple brought broke down. So after midnight, and even he just had a baby and he works all day long, he brought it to us because he knew we work for the people. Yeah, for the refugees and the poor and all that. And I work after midnight even because of this urgent work. Sometimes the, the information comes in or the demand so fast. So I have to work even midnight or all night with my disciple. And we didn't have the time to buy the machine. So he brought it in and he even offered it to us. And, if, and he wasn't even my disciple. We wanted to offer him money back because we never take things uh, for free like this when we didn't do anything for people. But he said, no, uh, because we work for others, not for ourselves, so we no need to bother. Of course, we will give some present in return. But I was very touched, and I feel that the non disciple people also deserve my attention. Therefore, today I decided that I will teach you more advanced methods, provided you have time and that you let me have you further later, then I will teach you. Otherwise, if you just practice alone, I don't know what happened to you. And you will not know how to uh, cope further should something arise. In this way, I feel responsible because the advanced method, you cannot teach it at random and then leave people just halfway through. Therefore, I have to tell you this. And it's the first time I open this. And for the people who are more serious and want to advance quickly on the spiritual path, have to be vegetarian fully from today. And I wish you, your country, your people, your government, all the best possible blessing from God. Thank you. viewers, we appreciate you being with us today for Words of Wisdom. Coming up next is Notre Dame de Paris, breathtakingly majestic Gothic Cathedral, part three of three, right after noteworthy news. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. May your life flourish by the blessings of your faith.
programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com baroblique schedule et suprememastertv.com baroblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Acesse suprememastertv.com barra schedule e suprememastertv.com barra WOW. Hamare karyakram pesh kiye jate hain kai bhashaon mein. Kripya dekhe suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule or suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Omda jemo ti gong do jong yu yen, ching kan suprememastertv.com xie xian schedule or suprememastertv.com xie xian WOW. Rajangan kami menawal kambanya bahasa. Sila kunjungi suprememastertv.com slash keharapan schedule dan suprememastertv.com slash keharapan WOW. Paramijuna mutawafira bel adiri min al your Jaziara Supreme Master TV.com forward slash schedule or Supreme Master TV.com forward slash WOW. Nasha programi predlagait monoga yaziku pajasta pasmatriti Supreme Master TV.com kasachirta schedule e Supreme Master TV.com kasachirta WOW. Ta programa tamas prosperite se poles glosses. Paracalumadite Supreme Master TV. Teliacom Cathetos Schedule K Supermaster TV Teliacom Cathetos WOW